randomized a uh, single center trial uh, where 140 eyes of 70 patients were in each group were divided into one group which had bilateral emetropia uh, and in the second group patients were chosen to have their second eye with a target close to minus 0.5 but not more than minus 0.75 in the non dominant eye what we looked to uh, achieve or to study was the binocular unaided near visual acuity at 40 cm after the second eye surgery this was our primary outcome measure and the secondary outcome measures were binocular unaided distance as well as near and corrected as well as uncorrected intermediate and near acuity along with the mesopic contrast sensitivity because we've also wanted to see how how affecting uh, mono vision would make uh, the contrast go the demographic parameters were uh, uh, equal across uh, all groups uh, across both the groups what we did find was uh, surprisingly that the unaided distance vision was not significantly different between the two groups so the uh, difference in the distance visual acuity was not great however the spherical equivalent of course because one eye was targeted for myopia this difference in the spherical equivalent was uh, uh, significant between the two groups but unaided distance visual acuity did not deteriorate uh, in the mini mono vision group when we looked at the intermediate vision the intermediate vision was comparable for across both groups which means that the mini mono vision group as well as the emetropia group had similar intermediate vision so the intermediate vision was not improved more by doing a mini mono vision the near add uh, also uh, the near for 66 cm that is for intermediate did not differ between the two groups when we looked at the near visual acuity the mini mono vision group did better so the the difference in the unaided visual acuity was significantly better in the mini mono vision group and the reading add that was required was significantly less in the mini mono vision group compared to the emetropia group uh, as you can see here uh, however both groups did require an add for good comfortable near vision reading so mini mono vision required lesser add but it's not as if they did not require any add for near uh, when we compared the contrast sensitivity uh, across different cycles uh, the emetropia and the mini mono vision group did equal uh, both in the photopic as well as in the uh, mesopic contrast with glare uh, testing with glare which is of uh, a tremendous importance both of these groups did equal across all different cycles We also did a quality of vision questionnaire uh, assessment, which has been validated in previous publications, uh, and none of the patients re reported any bothersome glare, halos, even in the mini mono vision group. Keeping in mind that they have slight ametropia between the two eyes, so I think it provides excellent unaided distance visual acuity in both groups. Targeting the other eye for about minus close to minus 0.5 improves had a positive impact on the near vision without affecting the distance vision. Uh, but uh, once again, for counseling point of view, it doesn't mean that they won't require reading ads. Uh, EDOFs are still predominantly for distance and near vision acuity, uh, and this has uh, recently been uh, corroborated in literature where they've also shown that targeting a little myopia. Uh, doesn't uh, affect the distance vision but improves the near vision somewhat just a case to highlight that this was a 64 year old lady uh, she is uh, now at home actively do a stock market trading and analysis on her desktop uh, children stay abroad very well to do but uh, stay abroad and husband is uh, almost bedridden with chronic ailments so doesn't uh, drive so she is the one who is who's running the home and managing all the finances and takes her husband to clinic so on and so forth she had cortical cataracts hypermetropia with astigmatism and press myopia she was keen on spectacle independence but did not want any compromise in the quality of vision because she is the main person running uh, everything so this was the while we planning the first eye what we 
chose was a 24 diopter T3 for her and uh, uh, fortunately uh, uh, things went off well. We talked to her that let's do one eye, let's see the refractive outcome and let's see if we can do a little myopia in the other eye at that point of time. Uh, the sur surgery went off uh, well as you can see these are the zones, the non-diffractive zones that are there which actually stretch and give the uh, uh, you know improved intermediate and somewhat near vision and these are the toric marks uh, uh, to show the toric component. She did very well post-operatively after one eye cataract surgery with reasonably good intermediate and near vision. So now when we did the second eye normally we would have chosen 22 as our first uh, choice of IOL for uh, uh, targeting emetropia but for the second eye we went one step ahead and we did a 22.5 so we are targeting a little myopia but not to the tune of say 0.75 or 1 or so so having done a 22.5 in the other eye uh, she did very well both for intermediate as well as for near and she tells us that she she is able to do most of her activities without glasses of course for reading very fine print particularly the names and the expiry dates on her husband's medicines she does require a reading add of the tune of 1 to 1.25 diopters. So I think the implications of this study are that surgeons may consider targeting a slight mini mono vision uh, in, e in these kinds of non-diffractive extended depth of focus lens to improve the range of near visual uh, uh, performance. Now, once again, however, not to say that they won't require reading ads or they can be spectacle independent for sure. Thank you so much for the patient listening. Shail, one, one question is, we have also seen this with the VVT, but when you tell them that you will be 6-9 parts, will you tell them that or uh, because unila binocularly it may not be six less than 6-6 six, six parts or whatever, yes, yes. but then 6-9 parts, will you have to tell them or? Yeah, I, we, we generally always tell them that we are going to try, particularly when we have told them pre-operatively before the first tie, that if the first tie ends up on as how we expect uh, with distance great vision, we may consider improving your near vision a little bit in the other eye. Uh, there will be when you compare each eyes, you may find your distance vision to be slightly better in one eye and near vision to be slightly better in the other eye. So we do tell them about yeah, but we This is all the same thing we do tell, but how often do they accept that? When they when they think that binocularly they cannot see the same in both the eyes, they will ask, uh, first thing you will ask is how we will be driving. Correct. Will I be able to see at the distance similarly and all those? So they, they are convincing, convinced by so, so, to be honest, it's not, I mean, we don't uh, offer mini monovision to each and every one whom we do VVT. Uh, first plan is always target emetropia, but if after first time we find they are good, they are happy, they seem to be the accept, accepting time, we talk to them about it and we do consider it. Yeah, because this is a, this is a very costly one, much costlier than the correct, panoptics. Correct. Okay. and they are placed it very high so their expectation about that will be very Absolutely. high when they pay so much Absolutely. but then sir. this after the both eyes are done people who agree to this are all very happy correct sir they are all very happy with them mostly they don't use glasses although correct, they carry sir. glasses mostly they don't use glasses mostly. so i am very happy with uh, these bino but there are few fewer patients accepting it because of the uh, yeah, exorbitantly high, high uh, very pricing this uh, they have done for this Absolutely, but, sir. 100 percent agree and how do you decide which is the dominant eye Sir, to be honest, it's more for theory than more for study purposes. When we do, we typically use the uh, the manual triangle test, which has been done by. But in a routine clinical case scenario, we just operate the eye, which has more cataract. More cataract. So they also will say, do the worst worst side. Yes. If you tell that correct, these correct. other eyes are dominant eye and correct, then that is correct. lesser cataract, they won't may not correct, agree correct. much. You know? so, Practically the eye with more cataract. And that eye, we cannot uh, uh, give, yeah, make it myopic, myopic also because correct, they will not yes. get impressed with the uh, good distance. Which Absolutely, they sir. Absolutely, sir. Thank you very much. Thank Any you. doubts on this? Because this is a very crucial thing to make people have no, almost no photic phenomenon, but they get very useful intermediate and near vision. Uh, that's a, this is a very crucial uh, step ahead. And this will um, this will encourage more people to take, uh, take up or use EDOS rather than uh, multifocals, especially in people who are demanding like this for okay, their okay. multiple activities. Okay.